Sapphire in the Kappa Workstation Loading and Editing Data The following video covers loading and editing data in Sapphire. However, please note that this is only an overview as it would not be possible to cover every available option and parameter value. Please refer to the help and our support videos for more detailed information. We start Sapphire from the Kappa Workstation Launcher. We can choose to start with an existing, new document or template, which is a document that contains all the static data from a previous analysis, such as reservoir data, units, and PVT properties. We start with the blank document. Here we set the reference time by entering the date of 12 January 2016 and keep the default time zone. The reference date has no impact on the analysis itself, as internally we use UTC. We change the reference date at any time, without any issues, as it is not used for any calculation, only the plot reference. In the next tab, we can enter well and test specific data. The next tab is units that at start is set to the default unit system. We can change them at any time for any document. We save the units into a file so it's easy to share the units with others. We also have some predefined units. The unit system is just a translator which converts the data from its own internal unit system into the units of choice. These are saved with the document so that when open an existing file, it will use the units of that document. Please note that although we have defined the units for this document, we can still load data in any unit system by changing the units for that particular parameter during the load. There is a comment option for observations, which are stored with the document. Clicking on Next, we enter some basic reservoir data for the first analysis. The parameters with the red background indicate that they are set to their default value. Enter the well radius, which in this case is 4.8 inch, a pay zone of 50 feet, and a porosity of 20%. The reservoir depth is not important. Basic pressure transit analysis is 2D only, so there is no depth in the model. Notice that the background color of the parameters has changed from red to white as the entered replace the default values. Next, we enter the PVT values. In this case, we use a single phase oil analysis. So we enter the three values for the basic fluid parameters of the oil volume factor viscosity, and total compressibility. In step five, we decide on the complexity of the analysis. In general, we start with a very simple model and we add more complexity in the subsequent models as required. In step six, we select our first model, which will be a standard vertical well in a homogeneous reservoir. Click on Create to open the main window. There is a control panel to the left-hand side. At the top, a ribbon to select different windows. Click Load Q in the control panel to load rates. Data can be loaded from ASCII files, Excel files, clipboard, keyboard, or database. In this case, we load our rates from a text file. We select and preview the file contents. Clicking on Next, we define the format of the data to be loaded. Rate data are steps, not points. And from the file header, we see that the time format is time at start in hours, starting from a reference date. Select time at start and check the reference date is the document one. It can be changed if required. To minimize screen clutter, the less used parameters are hidden under drop-down list on the left-hand side, such as time zone, separators, absent values, and saved formats. This last option allows us to define a certain data format to make it easy to load similar data. Click Load and enter the duration of the last rate. Click on Load P to load pressure data from a spreadsheet. Select the spreadsheet. the first tab, and next. 
We now define the layout of the columns. In this case, the first column is the date in month, day, year format. The second column is the time of day, and the third is pressure. Clicking on the first line of the data set, we see that these values are repeated in green in the window above. We go to the Saved Format section and Save on Validation. Click Load. Next, we have to give our saved format a name. We enter Pressures and click OK. Sometimes we have high frequency pressure data where we have two pressure points at the same time due to rounding errors in the time format. We select Skip New Data and Apply to All to load the rest of the data. The data is now loaded. Please note that the reference time, zero, corresponds to the beginning of the production history as the reference date is the defined document date or, by default, the date the document is created. Next, we are going to show how to add new pressure data to our existing data set. Click on Load P again, select the same spreadsheet, and the second tab. Click Next, call the pressures saved format, and check the columns and units. Select the option Append to 0, 1 pressures. The new pressure data is loaded and we can see that the pressure range is extended by 100 hours. Now we will show how to load the two data sets as a separate channel. Click Load P, select Spreadsheet Format, the Spreadsheet, and the tab Pressures 2. Check the formats. Rename the channel as 02 Pressures. Load, and now we have the new pressures as a separate channel. We will now edit and check the data. Select Edit QAQC and then select QAQC. Here we see all data that has been loaded and the two pressure channels with slightly different values. In the previous step, we loaded the second data set and appended it to the first. We can also load the pressure in separately and later merge them into a single channel. Click on Load, select the spreadsheet, and the tab Part 1. We can use the previously saved format to correctly define the columns. We rename the data set to 01 and load. Part 2 is loaded in the same way. Select the spreadsheet, tab Part 2, Check the formats, rename the channel to 02 and load. Click on the pressure drop down list at the top and see that we now have four pressure gauges. The first is the one created by appending the new data to the first part. The second gauge is the one we loaded in one go and we also have the two partial data sets. Please note that there is also a merge option where we can combine selected channels into a new channel. In the QAQC section, a commonly used option is to look at the pressure difference between gauges, such as in Tandem Gauge Survey. Select the Difference button, select the Reference Gauge, which is normally the lower gauge, and click OK. Zooming, we see the noise between the two pressure channels. The derivative option makes a straight derivative of the pressure as function of time. We also have the derivative in the diagnostic log log plot. 
and we can use the Convert to BHP option to correct the pressures from the gauge depth to a selected depth such as the top of the inflow zone. To get more information about the available options, please refer to the help. Moving now to Edit P. All the zoom buttons are on the right hand of the window frame where it is possible to select functions such as zoom in, out, and reset. This layout is common to all the plot windows. Zooming on the last section of the pressure channel, there are some pressures which need to be deleted from the analysis set. There are several options to do this. The first is the box option. Make a box around the single point and click delete. We can choose to delete the selected or non-selected points and to either overwrite the existing data channel or create a new gauge. We select creation of a new gauge for the new data, click OK, give it a name, thus creating a copy of the original data channel minus the previously selected points. We can see too that there is now another data channel in the drop-down list. Another option is to use a lasso to select data points and delete them. Another is by time range. There are also options to filter or average data. Refer to the help for full details. To edit rate data, select Edit Q. To simplify rate data, select the flow rates of the long pre-test period by selecting the time button and click and dragging the mouse from the first flow rate to the first shut-in period. Then click Process and Simplify. Here there are several options to reduce the number of steps, either by time period or rate change between steps. But the most common one is to use the percentage delta Q option. With the selected percentage value, it will combine the rates if they differ less than 10% from the previous rate. Click the Preview option and see that the number of rates have been reduced from 194 to 60 and preview the new rates in the plot. Create a new dataset. Click OK. Assign the new dataset a name and click OK. Another option is to average the whole flow period. Select the period and click Average. Create a new channel and call it Average. We now have the option to use either of these rate channels in the analysis. There is an extensive help with an explanation of all the buttons and options. The next step is to synchronize rates and pressures. The synchronization options are applied only to the reference rates. To check or change the reference rate, use the Snap Ref option. First, we are going to visualize all rate changes. To do this, display and select Show Rate Lines. Zoom in on the main flowing section. Now synchronize the start of the flow rate, zoom in on the pressures. If we select Move, we can move the time of the rate change to any position with the cursor. By releasing the mouse button, the rate change has moved to a new position. With the Sync option, we can also move the rate change, but it will only snap to a time with the pressure point. Zoom out and next, synchronize the time of one of the rate changes. Another very useful option with noisy data, or if the start of the buildup is ill-defined, 
is to zoom in on the start of the buildup and select the Line X button. There is now a straight line fit through these data points, Line 1 regression, and the last flowing pressures. Create Line 2 and select a representative part of the early buildup data. Ideally arrange where the pressures lie on a straight line. Finally, we select Move to Lines Intersect and click in the flow period that we wish to change. The rate change will move to the point of the line's intersection, where a new pressure point is created. These are the main features of loading and editing the rate and pressure data.